Hi there, welcome back. So today we're going to be doing a quick update on the vampire crabs, which I got a couple of months ago now. The tank is really matured now. Everything is really bedded in. The crypts which I've placed uh, in the substrate, which are immersed, they have really flourished that they uh, seem to really enjoy uh, being immersed from the water itself. The two Anubias which are growing out of the rocks, they've done really well. There was a moment where the crab started actually chewing on uh, some of the leaves, but I think that was just uh, some dieback from some molting. Um, one thing that you may notice if you watch the original video is I did put some dwarf crypts in the substrate of the actual water part of uh, the aquarium and unfortunately it seems the crabs take a like took a liking should i say to to burrowing around where i placed the dwarf crypts and then every time i place them somewhere different they would still dig them out so what i've done is i've actually placed a small amount just at the back of the uh, back of the rock rock work just to see if i can get get it to bed in and start to grow and flourish and then what I've done with the rest of it is I took it out of the aquarium and I've placed it on land um, and it's starting I've only done this very very uh, recently and it's starting to to grow now so I still have the five vampire crabs that I originally got and um, so you can see one is just under this plant here you just see it hiding down the back there there's one at the back behind the coconut shell and they've taken a liking to hiding in all kinds of places there's one just under here there so um what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly just put the camera down we're just going to catch a few of them out and we'll just take a look and see if we can sex a couple of them okay so these guys are real fast so let's just try and quickly take a look so you can see here, this is one I've caught. This is uh, looks like a male to me. So this middle part of the um, abdomen is called the apron. And on a male crab, essentially, they will have a long pointy apron, um, whereas females will be a much wider. So I think this is a male, um, but what I'll do is I'll catch another one, and which I think is a female and be able to share with you the difference. But you can also generally tell that the claws are generally a bit bigger in the males. So this one's got quite thick claws. Um, so yeah, that one's looking really healthy, really good. All right, I'm gonna gently try and put them back down now. There we go. Okay, so here's the second one. So you can see already, it's got much smaller claws. See that? Very small, she's trying to pinch me. If I just hold her claws out the way, as you can see that's a much, I'm getting a good light, much wider apron on the abdomen. So this is a definite female. She's actually missing a couple of legs, so it looks like she's been being picked on a little bit, so I have to keep an eye on that. But yeah, there's, that's a lovely little female there. So that's how you can really tell, that's, that's the sure, surefire way to sex them, is you check the undersides wide apron essentially covering the whole whole part of the the lower body um rather than a point so i'm just going to put her back okay so another thing you'll um spot in here is i've got a bit of cucumber in there so these guys they're scavengers and um, they're omnivorous so um what i do is i actually feed my uh, plecos cucumber and then the next morning I'll come in and I'll put the cucumber in there in this aquarium here for the crabs to chew on over the next few days. I always put it on the land so it doesn't uh, go into the water and become um, start to mold and things like that. Um, and then I can just take it out real, real easily if I need to. But they do love a bit of cucumber. Um, but the majority of that chewing has been done by the plecos from the night before. Since we've just seen uh, one of the female crabs uh, missing a couple of legs, um, I think what I can do to try and help avoid uh, that sort of thing happening in the future, I think with crabs it kind of it's kind of one of those things that happens, especially when they molt. Uh, they're very vulnerable, so it, uh, it's, it's likely that when she last molted, uh, she probably 
had a run in with one of the other crabs and they took off a couple of legs or a leg um, but what I'm going to do is uh, this crypt is, is doing really well so I'm actually going to propagate it and place it elsewhere in the uh, in the aquarium on the land just to break up that line of sight uh, for the guy so I'm quickly going to do that now okay so I've now just made this one a lot smaller I've taken a lot of the uh, broken lots of parts off um, I've placed a piece here so hopefully that will start to spread. Um, I've placed a little piece over here with the, near the crab there but near this, this coconut shell to add a bit more greenery at the back there. I've placed some right at the back so hopefully that will create some line of sight for them to escape between, between and I've also placed a little offshoot right here as well. Um, so hopefully they'll start to uh, really grow and flourish and what I generally do is I don't actually put any fertilizer in this water. Um, essentially what happens is is um, all the water which is in here is essentially f flooding uh, the land area. So all the plants are sending their roots down and getting their nutrients. You can see it's quite moist the actual substrate itself so it's nice and nice and damp so the plants have got plenty of uh, water and um, I leave I leave the plants to it if I notice that the plants are you know their leaves are going yellow or they're not growing as 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 what I would like then I do have some root tabs that I place under them so for example this this one wasn't doing as good you can see these this one I haven't touched at all and it's really really expanded um, and this one had done um, but I've placed a root tab under here a few weeks ago now and it's really starting to come into a, a life of its own um, so obviously it wasn't just getting enough nutrients there so what I do is I just keep an eye on these new new bits I've placed in and if I start to see the leaves going a bit yellow or anything like that then I'll just add a root tab just to help the growth and I'll hopefully well, the next time I share this, share this tank with you all um, in, a, in a few months time uh, hopefully it'll be a much more lush green environment. So now we're actually going to do the water change. So when it comes to water change this aquarium, what I do a lot of the time is I actually just clean my shrimp aquarium and I take the water from in here and it tops up into there. So the shrimp will get fresh clean water and then I just top up this aquarium, which is great because there'll be some nitrates in here which help feed and provide nutrients to, um, to this aquarium itself. The crabs only really use the the water section if they're looking for food um, or if they are about to molt the majority of their time is spent on land which is why with these types of types of setups you need to have about two-thirds land to one-third water one thing you're probably noticing is that the water seems a bit stained and that's the tannins which is actually coming off of the coconut fiber substrate so over a few months that will eventually disappear uh, it's not as when I originally set this aquarium up, after a, a th three or four days, the water would be really, really dark. But uh, now it's been set up for a couple of months with weekly water changes, which is 100%. I take everything out. Um, it's really cleared up. So let's quickly just do that. So as part of doing the water change, I always check under a certain rock because it seems to be my crab's favorite little spot to molt. And this is what we found is, is essentially uh, one of their uh, old, old exoskeletons, old skins. And to someone who's not kept crabs before, this could be quite a shock to, to see this. So I'll just place it here so we can actually get a good, good look at it. Here's the, here's the shell. And you know, at first glance, someone could think, "Oh, oh no, I've, one of my crabs has died." Um, but a clear giveaway is obviously it's, it's discoloured. If we take a look at the eyes, and it may be difficult for me to capture here, but you can see they're see-through, not white, and that's obviously where the crab has, has retracted itself out of this shell. Uh, an interesting fact as well. So you see here this crab had three legs on this side but they normally have four on each side so this side's got four um, I was able to spot the crab which molted but unfortunately I haven't been able to get a good shot to show you but I can confirm that it's, it's missing limb 
um, has has regrown. So it's now got its its four legs on, on both sides, and that, that's just a an amazing ability that um, crabs crabs actually have. How they actually get out? So I tried to catch some footage uh, on a previous molting where one was molting at the front, and unfortunately I missed it. But I've got some footage of of the crab once it had exited its molt, and they're extremely vulnerable at this stage. It's, it's, it's crazy how vulnerable they are. They're, they're soft. Um, they could easily be punctured. Um, they could easily be um, torn apart by other other crabs or predators. Um, so what they do is they actually will hide uh, for the for a few days while their their shell um, hardens up. But how they actually exit is actually out the back here. So I'll see if I can show you. So I'll see if I can show you. So if I just pry the back here, the carapace. There, there you go. You can see that's essentially where the crab was. And it's just extracted its body out of this skin. It's amazing. It's 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 mind blowing really when you actually comprehend what they what they've done here. So yeah. So we've got a. Uh, Freshly molted crab in there now. It's a male, so if I flip, flip over, see here the apron is thin, not wide like the female I showed you earlier. So bring it to focus. There we go, and you can see these big, chunky claws. I think this is actually my largest male, who's who's now even larger. So there's a quick update on the crabs. They're all doing great, I think. Uh, by moving the plants around in on the substrate, hopefully I'll break up line of sight, give them a bit of peace from each other so they don't feel like they need to um, possibly fight as much. Um, so hopefully that will that will reduce the amount of limbs which are, are being missing on some of the crabs. Um, if you really if you really like these crab videos, then please uh, like the video so that I know and if people are interested um, I'll follow up again in a few months time and actually update on you know what I'm feeding them at what times how often things like that um, and if obviously there's any any breeding and things like that then by all means I'll make sure I update you all um, at the moment no signs of breeding yet it normally happens around the times that the females uh, molt so um, I have not seen uh, my large female molt yet, so it, it may be just a matter of time before that happens, um, but I'll keep you all posted on that. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. Have a great day as always, and I'll see you in the next one.